Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship from Blackstone Presbyterian Church in Blackstone, Virginia. It's good to be with you this morning. Uh, I will be away the next couple of weeks, but we'll be back on December 2nd. So that will be the next time that we, uh, we send a service of worship out into the internets. So uh, I encourage you to look around. Uh, there are a lot of folks doing some awfully interesting things uh, with online worship. It's not uh, our preferred venue, but uh, it is uh, a place where we really can come together and worship God. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the ability to come together and worship, come together to praise your name, come together to thank you for all the goodness in this world. When so often we feel a bit overwhelmed by those things that are not so good. Bless this time together. In Christ's name, amen. We take responsibility for, uh, for those things that we do which we should not do, and those things we don't do that we should do. And we do it on a regular basis, hoping to make it a habit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, uh, we make glad the heart of God who is ready to forgive. In humility and in faith, let us take a moment of silent confession. Hear the good news. Hear some of the best news you'll ever hear. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ was born for us. Christ lived for us. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power over us. Christ prays for us. I declare to you, in the name of this Christ, you are forgiven. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Since Christ has forgiven us, so we make it a habit to forgive each other. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with me. And now, cleansed in spirit, we come before the throne of grace. We come before the one who knows what we are thinking, who knows what we are praying before we open our mouth. Let us pray. Dear God, we come before you looking for you to, to pick us up when we stumble, to pick us up when we fall, to pick us up, lift us up, dust us off, to feed us, to nourish us, to shelter us, and to gently, sometimes firmly, sometimes roughly, steer us back on the proper path of life. We give you thanks for the opportunity to minister to others in your name, taking part in the work of rescuing those in peril of 
bringing food to those who are hungry, good water to those who thirst, good shelter, good housing, good health care, good education, all that is needful for thriving in this world, all that you have prepared as blessing for us all, we give you thanks that you have made us helpers in this task. We ask this morning especially for your blessing for those who are sick in mind or body or spirit, for those who are dying and those who mourn their dead. We ask your blessing for our community, our nation, all nations, the whole world. We ask that you bless us all. And again, we give you thanks for the chance to be a part of your blessing to others. We pray this day and all days in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, your embodiment on this earth, who came to us and taught us, lived for us, died for us, rose for us, and taught us the prayer that is needful this day and every day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and thine is the power and thine is the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel reading is from Matthew. It's one of the, uh, the three last parables in Matthew. Uh, they're sometimes called the judgment parables, but these are the last teachings of Jesus by word before he goes to literally meet his maker. Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed, so I was afraid 
and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Kind of a, a grim outcome there for the, uh, the third slave, the one who was given one talent. This story is also told in Luke, and uh, the amount uh, of money is different in Luke. It's not nearly as much. Uh, these talents, uh, one talent is enough to, to keep a, a day laborer uh, in wages for 10 years. It's a goodly sum of money. And this, like so many other parables, we don't want to take it too far. We don't want to imagine that, that uh, God is the master. God is the harsh and unforgiving uh, master. We know that is not the case. But we are to understand how big a responsibility uh, these slaves have been given. And that what they have been given is enormously valuable. And this all works if we understand what they have been given uh, as gifts. And for us Christians, we would call those gifts of the Spirit, that they have been given um, all that they need to go out into the world to share those gifts and to see those gifts multiply. And... If you go out into the world and you don't use the gifts that you were given, if nobody ever receives those gifts, if you don't share those gifts, well, you can't expect much to come from them. The penalty for the third slave seems to me to really highlight um, just how valuable each gift we are given is. We have so many gifts. A congregation is kind of the sum total of the gifts of all the congregants. We are meant to use these gifts uh, along with other people who are using their gifts. And in the, uh, uh, the, the joyful uh, addition and uh, total that follows, uh, we are to understand that every congregation, and certainly this congregation, has more than enough gifts to do the work that it is called to do. Yet, if we hide these gifts, if we do not share them, uh, our work will never be finished. Once upon a time, there was a preacher um, who endeavored always to be frugal, and prudent in some things so that he could be generous in other things. He tried to keep a good balance, but sometimes things got out of balance. And as an example of that, one morning um, in winter, he was driving early uh, in the terrible traffic in Hampton Roads, and he knew that a few miles down the road was gas that was just a few cents cheaper than the gas stations he was passing. And he was out on the interstate and to his continued embarrassment uh, he ran out of gas. He called his uh, uh, insurance company which had an emergency service, uh, part of the package and uh, somebody was uh, sent uh, dispatched to, uh, to give him assistance, but no sooner had he arranged that than uh, somebody pulled up from behind, and it was one of the, uh, the many uh, Virginia Department of Transportation trucks that circulate there and in Richmond and other 
uh, high traffic areas. And the fellow parked behind them with the yellow lights flashing came up. Oh, that poor fellow, he was so, so embarrassed, but he had to say he had run out of gas. And the fellow was kind and pleasant, went back to the, the back of his truck, got some gas, filled the fellow up, uh, wished him a good day, and the fellow was, was about his way. I uh, had to call the uh, insurance uh, emergency roadside people, tell them not to bother. Went down, filled up for whatever the gas cost, and uh, went about his business. And of course, it doesn't take uh, any great stretch for y'all to understand that that was me, or to understand that I'm uh, I'm still embarrassed to tell you about it. I, I just feel so foolish to do a thing like that, and it really is just me pinching those pennies too hard. I was asked this week to, to give a stewardship sermon. And uh, fair enough, I haven't give one, given one in many years, not a specific uh, a stewardship sermon, but I'm trying to adapt to the traditions of, of Blackstone. And uh, I know y'all are adapting this year too because we haven't been able to do what we usually do in terms of giving the, the form for time and talents and so forth, which is just as important as the money that I'm going to talk about in a moment, uh, if not more important. Uh, all that we have, uh, all the blessings that we have, all the gifts that we have been given are to be valued and uh, used accordingly. Uh, my first reaction to the request is, is to say that every sermon that uh, I've ever preached, I hope is a stewardship sermon. I hope the question of stewardship is before you all every day. And I kind of think it is. The first thing I would say uh, specifically about uh, financial stewardship is thank you. Thank you all for keeping the church going, for maintaining steadily uh, your pledges, and the church has been able to, to get about its business without undue concern or anxiety or fear from the future. Uh, this is a result of your steadfast giving. So thank you. It's, and I think we can stretch this analogy a little bit farther. It, you know, maybe the church sometimes is like one of those rescue vehicles that uh, we keep chugging along, keeping the motor running, and we're going down the highway. And, uh, you know, perhaps part of our task is to look out for those who are in trouble along the way and give them what assistance we may. Some things we're able to take care of on our own with the, the tools at our disposal. But in... Uh, uh, in matters where it gets more serious, well, we can we can call the tow truck and we can stay behind the, the stranded motorist with our lights flashing to, to try to keep him safe until uh, uh, more help arrives. But y'all have kept the engine of this church ticking over nicely. It's running smooth, so thank you. In the matter of time and talents, uh, this has been a frustrating time because we're not able to use all the time and, and talents, all the gifts and the ways we have used them before. And before this period, y'all had a, per uh, a time when you were uh, without a minister and, and some things fell through the cracks then. And it's like uh, we haven't really gotten off to the start of our time together the way that we'd all hoped in the beginning. Uh, nevertheless, thank you. Thank you for doing uh, what you could uh, to keep us going as we, we have uh, endured these recent months. Thank you. In this time where we're, where we're still overwhelmed with events outside our control, um, one thing that I've been doing more of and, and doing more of in this last couple of weeks is to, is to keep thinking about things that we might do in the future. 
when uh, all this mess is behind us and we may go about our, our business in peace uh, without this terrible distraction. And uh, if anything, uh, thinking along these lines makes me more excited for that time to come. And in a strange way, it makes it more possible uh, for me to bear what must be born, for us all to, to do what we must do uh, to arrive at the end of this crisis uh, safely. But there's also a place, and uh, this is as good a time of year as any to think about it, uh, for continuing to think of new ways to reach out to others, to reach out to the community, uh, to keep our lines of communication open and healthy. And again, I thank you. I thank you for watching this service online. It's not uh, uh, my favorite uh, way to, to be with you in worship, but it is real worship. And it's a kind of worship that I certainly never knew before this year. Uh, and I see the possibilities. But right now, I think our, our principal need is to, uh, to have a good Christmas. You know that old uh, Christmas song, cause we need a little Christmas right this very moment? I'm feeling that one like never before. Uh, to that end, we've already uh, figured out that we're going to have a, a regular Christmas Eve service at 9 o'clock on Christmas Eve. Uh, it will be an abbreviated service of lessons and carols. We'll, we'll uh, tell the old, old story and we'll put a few hymns with it. We'll share communion. Uh, the week before, uh, the exact date and time to be announced, uh, Will Pierce will uh, we'll play some Christmas music in the sanctuary and folks will be welcome to come in and, and just listen. Uh, we're also thinking of one or two uh, things for the children. Uh, maybe I'll do some Christmas carols for them. And if so, I'll, I'll do it through the internet and we'll, uh, we'll put it out for you as well. But uh, uh, the session and some of the deacons met this week and, and they had so many good ideas and uh, I try to add in my two cents worth. But we look to you. We look to you all. Uh, to see something that we've missed. Uh, so many of the, the things that we've done this year have come from, you know, one comment from one person at the right time, and, you know, the light bulb goes off, and we think of something new to do or a different way to do something, and uh, that's maybe one of our jobs too always, but especially important at a time like this, to keep uh, uh, looking for those, those ideas that can come to fruition within the limits of our current circumstances. So that's, that's your stewardship sermon for this year. Um, you'll have received a letter. Uh, there still are forms for times and time and talents and how you would like to give of those this year. Uh, for all of those who feel like you just can't, uh, you can't commit to anything at this time, we absolutely understand but I remind you that uh, the one thing that you may always do, uh, the one thing that is perhaps the most essential thing that we do do is to pray. To pray for this church, to pray for the leadership of the church, to pray for this community, to pray for this nation, to pray for this world. We always keep these things before us and... Uh, we follow uh, where that vision leads us, secure in the knowledge that we're going in the right direction. Thank you for all your help in helping others uh, reach their goals. Amen. This is not a stewardship hymn, per se. It's just the... Uh, the hymn that was going through my mind when I woke up this morning. Unless we say that every hymn, just like every sermon, every prayer, when you think about it, is a, is a stewardship hymn. 
glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I lay my burden down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I lay my burden down. I feel better, so much better since I lay my burden down. I feel better, so much better since I lay my burden down. No more fear, no more worry since I laid my burden down. No more fear, no more worry since I laid my burden down. No more sickness, no more sorrow since I laid my burden down no more sickness no more sorrow since i laid my burden down glory glory hallelujah since i laid my burden down glory glory hallelujah since I laid my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I laid my burden down, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always.